rejoice in the Lord now and always. Sing it again, we rejoice. Delight in the love He has shown us. Gratefully lift up your voice. His gentleness among us will join our hearts with praise. We gather in His goodness, the family of grace. With each breath He's given, praise the Lord in these times. Just for nothing, pray for all that you need. Come with the song of thanksgiving, lay your requests at his feet. His peace will fall upon us to guard our hearts and minds. In Christ who reigns eternal. Shepherd of our lives, with each breath He's given, praise the Lord in these times we live in. We will praise the Lord throughout every season. Rejoice in the Lord now and always. Tell of the good He has done. Worship the Lord to remember all of the joy yet to come. The hope that burns within us, the dark cannot destroy. With praise that's ever ending, we say again rejoice. With each breath He's given, praise the Lord in these times we live in. We will praise the Lord throughout every season. to speak a word of welcome to you. Welcome. Welcome to Canyon Lake United Methodist Church as we celebrate the birth of Christ together. Whatever it is that you bring in the door, it's you're bringing in the door all these kids who are just dying to get home and rip some paper knowing that there's got to be something more than socks in there somewhere. It's the weight of what this last year has been in your life. 
it's the anxiety of what waits for you after the holidays. Or maybe, or maybe it's just the joy of being here tonight. But whatever it is that brings you in and whatever you bring with you, I want you to know that you are welcome. So glad that you are here. I'm Pastor Scott McCurdy. I'm Pastor Stephanie Eliasson. And we would love it if you would take time to grab the friendship pad from the center aisle, uh, pass that down your pew, and fill it out so that we know that you are here. If you would like to give us any contact information or updates on your family and your lives, you can do that there as well. There are also prayer request cards in there if you would like to submit one of those. Our staff takes time during our staff meetings to pray over those together, and we also have a prayer team that joins in praying over the concerns of our congregation. If you did not pick up a candle, either a flame-operated one like this model here or a battery-operated one, please make sure that you get one uh, before the end of our service. You'll want that because we're going to light them together. There we go. There we go. It is time for our first scripture lesson. First scripture tonight comes out of the Old Testament. It is out of the prophet Isaiah, a prophet who lived 700 years before Christ. These are the words from the prophet. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived on a, in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors, all the garments rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom." He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. I want to invite you to stand as we sing together. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father this blessed angel came And unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, Gold I bring to crown him again, King forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. Oh, oh star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. 
Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, worshiping God on high. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. God rest ye merry gentlemen, 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 God rest ye merry gentlemen. Have a seat. Our second lesson comes from Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the Lord's name. Tell of the Lord's salvation from day to day. Declare the Lord's glory among the nation, the Lord's marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. The Lord is to be revered above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before the Lord, strength and beauty are in the Lord's sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due the Lord's name. Bring an offering and come into the Lord's courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The word, world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. The Lord will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad. And let the earth rejoice, let the sea roar, and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For the Lord is coming, for the Lord is coming to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with the, Lord, the Lord's truth. It is time for Miss Erin and kids. Kids of all ages, there's no limit, high or Everyone low. Everyone is welcome. If it helps to have someone come with you, that's fine too. Okay, ready? We're going to sit down. Oh. A new joiner, awesome. Perfect. Let me have this, please. Okay, actually, I think, Braley, we should do this. I'm going to sit where you're sitting, and I'm going to switch because I'm going to hold a book. Actually, Stephanie, Would you like me to hold thank it? you. Okay, so you're going to want to sit. You can see it on the screen behind me, or you can see it here. Okay, so how, that's my foot. Okay. <laughs> Hello. I'm so glad you're here. Do you read books on Christmas Eve? Yes. Yeah? yeah? What do you read? Twas the night before Christmas? Yes. Christmas books. Christmas books, of course. You're going to watch Christmas. Watch. Listen, Christmas books. We used to read always um, Luke, it, the, in the book of Luke where Jesus is born, and then Twas the night before Christmas. And then I came across this book, and it's Twas the night before Christ. And so I thought it would be fun to read to you. Are you ready? It's on the screen or Miss Stephanie's, my beautiful assistant. Ah. Twas the night before Christ, Christ, and all through the land, not a creature was stirring except two, a woman and a man. They were tired and hungry from traveling all day, and they searched for a place that would welcome their stay. 
But the inns were all full in Bethlehem town, so they went to the stable and laid themselves down. Now the woman named Mary was soon to have a child, and her loving husband Joseph looked at her and smiled. Though weary and warm, worn, they held each other tight, while a bright shiny star up above filled the night. And there in the hay on the first Christmas morn, a baby boy child, a savior, Jesus Christ, was born. His eyes, how they sparkled, his face all aglow, and goodness of God showed from his head to his toe. The sky filled with angels, and they sang with great joy, Hosanna! Glory to God was their song for this boy. The shepherds in the fields where they saw their display rushed to Bethlehem's stable where the Son of God lay. The brilliant light overhead guided people from afar to find their joyous miracle beneath the Christmas star. Oh, Mary and Joseph were so proud as they could be of the little baby Jesus and their happy family. For they knew that the world would be changed forevermore, but the tiny blessed infant, a child of God that Mary bore. And ever since that time of the very first Christmas, we've continued to celebrate the spirit of the Lord Jesus. With songs and music and gifts from the heart, with friendship and kindness and lots of love to impart, while a smile on their lips and a gleam in our eyes, the voices of the world all joined in reprise. Merry Christmas, Christians, to each and every one. Rejoice in the Lord Jesus, God's very special son. So, yes, you're going to get Christmas presents tomorrow, maybe tonight. But I just want you to remember and take a moment to sing happy birthday to Jesus because it's baby Jesus' birthday, too. We want to remember that as well, right? Awesome. So in the spirit of it being Jesus' birthday, I have a candy cane for you. If you can't have red dye, I have special candy canes. So just tell me, all right? And we're going to say a prayer, and then I'll send you to your spots. Ready? Put your hands together. Dear Lord, thank you so much for spend, sending this very special baby to us. We love you so much, and we just want to remember you and that gift tomorrow in the midst of all the other wonderful gifts we get. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so you can come to me for a candy cane, and then you can go back to your spots. You're so welcome. There we go. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all I got. Sorry. Our fourth lesson comes from Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. <laughs> The shepherds came to see the baby Just by his mother's side He laid the Savior inside a manger Oh, what a glorious night Oh, what a glorious night I hear the angels singing Hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know that love has 
Jesus come and sing it out. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds wondered, they couldn't hide it from everyone in sight. All were amazed when they heard how God came down on this glorious night. God came down on this glorious night. I hear the angels singing. Hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know that love has come. I sing it out. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. lesson comes to us from the gospel according to John. In Mark, there is no birth story. In Matthew and in Luke, there are two birth stories. But in John, it insists that, that Christ comes not as a baby. Christ comes as light, shattering the darkness. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. But he himself was not the light. He came to testify to the light. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. 
May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing, not just of this word, but all of God's words tonight. You might be able to do this without a notebook, but I can't. Come on, here we go. We get to do the sermon together tonight. <laughs> I have been thinking lately, and I have been watching a little bit about what's going on in Paris. Do you remember that five years ago, Notre Dame Cathedral burned down? Oh my gosh, it was just the most horrific blaze and the entire world turned in horror to watch as this incredible cathedral went up in flames and lo and behold, they were able to save it. And in the last five years, they have been putting close to $800 million into the restoration of this amazing building. Because it's not just a building. It is, an, it is, it is a, a deep, deep part of our cultural humanity. It's, it's part of who we are. Where did this cathedral come from? Well, it's on an island in the Seine River. And it was begun in the 1100s. But what was absolutely fascinating is that it took 182 years. Let's see, if we go at 20 years for every generation, that would be nine generations. It took nine generations before they could have the first worship service inside of that cathedral. Why? Why? Did you know that those huge Gothic cathedrals, when they go up, the foundation has to go down, of course. And when you're building in the middle of a river, you have to make sure that that foundation goes down absolutely to the bedrock. And what that meant is that you had to put together huge work crews back in the 1100s in order to, first of all, dig. Now, stop and think. This was, of course, before electricity. This was before diesel or steam engines. This was before steel. How did they do that? They had rudimentary tools that they knew exactly how to use. And while they began digging down to the bedrock, there was another huge crew over at one of the quarries beginning to dig out those huge blocks of stone and then figure out how are they going to transport those? How would you do that without trucks? How would you do that without trains? How would you do that with, with wagons and wheels that really wouldn't support all that weight? They figured it out and they built it up and up and up and up. It took as much building underneath the ground as there was to be a building above the ground. There is as much cathedral down below as there is up above. And they kept digging it and they kept building it and they kept creating it. It took over 800 years to finish that sanctuary that amazing place that, that we know. What I want you to see is that it was ongoing creation. It, was, it, it, took, it took an insight. It took a vision to say there is something more here. Can you imagine being one of the woodworkers? Can you imagine being one of the stone workers? Can you imagine being just part of the community? These communities, which were in existence longer than Rapid City, longer than the state of South Dakota. These communities were just there, building, building, building. It's an ongoing creation. And when you stop to think that they knew exactly what they were building, they were building something to the glory of God. They were building something that they knew would last so much longer than anything that would resemble their own personal history. It was incredible to say, we are a part of an ongoing history. We are part of an ongoing creation. And this is what we want you to see tonight, is that you and I are part of that. If, if you want a really great example of that, just think of the fire in 2019 at, at Notre Dame. They thought that that, that cathedral was done. They, I mean, they thought that they had, were done building it, and now, they had to start all over again and build and clean and put together. 
It's ongoing creation. It's ongoing creation. Something else that is ongoing for us as Christians is the concepts that sit behind these candles. We light these candles the four weeks of Advent that represent hope, peace, joy, and love. And they lead up to the Christ candle, which we've lit tonight. Why? Because these things, these four words, these ideas, are parts of the promises that Christ brings and fulfills and begins. Because these don't just happen. Peace doesn't just happen. Hope doesn't just happen. They take work. Lots of hard work. And God knew this. God knew that we would need help to achieve God's plan for us. And so God came to us as a little baby, God in Jesus the Christ, to feel as we feel and live as we live, and to show us how we are called to live in our world as peacemakers and peace sustainers, as joy bringers, as lovers of all, as hope givers. Did Jesus' birth and life instantly bring peace? No, his life was certainly not peaceful. And neither will ours be. But each thing that we do, each little brick that we add to this work can, can and will move our world a little closer to what God wants for us. A world filled with joy peace, hope, and love. A world returned to God's plan. We live out each of these things. We live out peace knowing that perfect peace won't happen just yet. But God's peace is both now and in the future. It is now and it is not yet because even though it is not yet fully realized here and fully complete, it has already begun. It began a long time ago. And it continues with each of us. We get to proclaim to live and breathe peace and hope and joy and love to those around us in our lives as we live into God's purpose for us by following Jesus' example. Tonight what we celebrate is the building block of Christ's birth. That building block, that foundation stone on which everything else is built, everything else is made. You are part of this ongoing process of celebrating the living presence of Christ in this world. Sing 
I want to tell you just a little bit about what is going on here as, as I mean, in, inside of this congregation. As you are here tonight, this is part of the building blocks of, of who we are as community, as family. It is such an amazing thing. I love to simply be out and among you and talking and finding out to say, what's going on in your family? Here's a grandchild that I have not met. So and I was so hoping that little one was going to make this, the journey up the stairs because I was, I was so ready and waiting for her just to come and sing with us. It is just such a joy to be able to do that. Uh, here, here is something that's going on in our congregation that I simply want to invite you to. It is in the year 2024 that we are going to be reading the Bible together. We're going to start on page one and we're going to go right straight through to the end. We're going to start on January 1st and go right straight through to the end. And there are three ways that you can participate in this with us. There, uh, there is a book that we are using. It's simply called The Bible Year. And, uh, and we would gladly order a copy with you. Or every time we meet for worship, uh, there is a, a handout that is called The Path. And it is, it's all a, a daily devotions that, that pull you deeper into what's happening inside of the worship service and sermon. But those are also listed there. But here, the third way is especially for those of you who have come from out of state, who are a long way away, we're online. And if this is something that you think that you would like to be participating in, we would love to have you join us online as day by day and book by book, we walk through it. I want you to know that there is an offering plate that is set out. If, you, if, you would like, if there are, is any way that you would like to, to participate in the life and ministry of this church with offerings, we invite you to do that. We would come to that point where we get to celebrate the coming of the light. So I would encourage you to find your candles wherever you have stashed them. Um, some candle etiquette before we begin. Uh, once your candle is lit, please make sure it stays upright. Uh, the unlit candle can tip into yours to light itself, but to help keep wax off of our pews, floors, and each other, please keep lit candles up. With that, let's bring some light. Let's bring some light.
sleep in heavenly started there was but one light and one light lit another and two lights lit another and then and then and then in many many ways 2023 has been a wonderful year and in many ways it has been just a train wreck what will 2024 look like in many ways it will be wonderful and in many ways it will be a train wreck and that's the way it is but if we remember that we are one of the lights of Christ, that we are one of the shining points in darkness. We can remember that we are not alone, that there are those who are next to us who shine that light also. Hold that light up. the word and the word was the life and the life was the light of all people you carry this light this light is within you after we have blown out these candles long after we have blown them out that light still shines in you may it shine through this entire year in the middle of darkness to bring others the light and love of Jesus Christ go now as a people who have been named by God and claimed by God, so that you can live the love of God. Go in the name of God, who is our creator, Jesus Christ, our Savior, born this night. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, may it be that you go in God's peace. Are you ready together? May you go in God's peace. We're going to bring up the lights and we're going to sing.
God's peace. May you go in Christ's peace. May you go in the presence of the Holy Spirit that you might know God's love and wonder. May you go. Amen. Joy, unspeakable joy. Oh